The White House has recently mandated nationwide property upgrades that will affect all new buildings in the next six years. These upgrades will encompass various requirements and will be seen across the board. The focus is on implementing eco-regulations for air conditioners and refrigerators, as advocated by President Biden. The actions for these upgrades are set to commence in 2025, and all the necessary rules and regulations are already in motion. However, the general public will soon become aware of the upcoming changes in the real estate sector. John Kerry, the special presidential envoy, has emphasized the need to reduce energy consumption in AC units and refrigerators to combat environmental issues. The speed at which these changes are taking place is remarkable. Additionally, the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, has joined the U.S. delegations to COP28, led by John Kerry. This collaboration demonstrates the alignment of efforts from various agencies, civil society leaders, and the White House. The UNEP building's breakthrough in Dubai, UAE, is part of this partnership, showcasing the rapid progression of these initiatives. The HUD's involvement in this endeavor highlights the commitment to energy efficiency and climate resiliency for communities, homes, buildings, and infrastructure throughout the nation. HUD Secretary Marsha L. Fudge has emphasized their dedication to working closely with the Department of Energy to fortify homes and communities across the country in order to address the challenges posed by the climate crisis. Additionally, Jennifer Granholm, the U.S. Secretary of Energy, has reinforced the Biden-Harris administration's whole-of-government approach to lower costs for working families and ensure that all communities have access to the benefits of transitioning to cleaner energy. This new partnership between the Department of Energy and HUD will allow them to leverage each other's expertise in order to provide more affordable and healthier housing options while simultaneously reducing daily emissions contributing to the climate crisis. However, these property upgrades will come at a cost for property owners. While some may see this initiative as a positive step forward, others may realize the financial implications of bringing their properties up to code. The costs involved can vary greatly depending on the property. It might range from thousands to tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of dollars. To determine the specific upgrades required for a property, it is advisable to consult with a specialist. In these upgrades, various aspects of the property need to be addressed. This includes the replacement of stoves and AC units, ventilation improvements, and even modifications to the building envelope such as checking the exterior stucco. The goal of these upgrades is to ensure that energy is not wasted and that the property is optimized for energy efficiency. Considering the impact of these upgrades, a question arises regarding how many people can afford to borrow money at the current interest rates. Unlike a few years ago, when interest rates were as low as 2%, the borrowing costs have now increased. This will result in higher expenses for consumers who are already stretched financially, and it may prove to be a challenge for many individuals. Examining the actions taken by Warren Buffett, who has heavily invested in home builders, sheds light on why such investments make sense. Opting to buy a newly constructed home that incorporates these upgrades can be more cost-effective than purchasing an existing home and undergoing renovations to meet the required standards. As a result, a growing number of people are likely to face difficulties due to these necessary upgrades. The announcements regarding mandatory property upgrades are a response to the changing patterns of human settlement and the role the building sector plays in greenhouse gas emissions. It is projected that nearly 70% of the global population will reside in urban areas by 2050. Currently, the building sector is responsible for approximately 40% of annual greenhouse gas emissions worldwide. Collaborating with federal partners, the Department of Housing and Urban Development is committed to reducing these emissions and ensuring that homes and urban communities are resilient to climate change. Numerous cities, numbering 28 to be specific, have made pledges to achieve the outlined targets within the next six years. A common theme among these pledges is the implementation and enforcement of building energy regulations and mandatory performance standards, which extend to existing buildings as well. The measurements also aim to reduce embodied emissions in buildings by considering benchmarking and whole life cycle emissions. In addition, cities are encouraged to take comprehensive actions towards vital decarbonization efforts. This trend is not limited to one region, as it is taking place throughout North America, indicating a widespread national movement. For individuals currently renting but considering buying property, it is crucial to factor in the potential costs of these upgrades in the coming years. Getting ahead of the curve may prove to be more cost-effective and advantageous. It's important to recognize that labor costs for skilled workers are expected to rise, as are material costs and insurance rates, making the entire process more expensive over time. Thus, purchasing a property sooner rather than later, with a clear understanding of the associated expenses, is a strategic move. 
This could involve acquiring a brand new home or property that already incorporates the necessary upgrades, ensuring compliance with the regulations, and avoiding additional costs down the line. In addition to lower insurance costs, builders of new homes are also able to offer buyers a lower mortgage rate. This is particularly beneficial in the current real estate market, where it can be difficult to purchase a home due to a low supply and high mortgage rates. These challenges have led many potential buyers to question whether now is the right time to buy or if it would be wiser to stay in their current homes or continue renting. Fortunately, there is one option that may help buyers secure a more favorable mortgage rate. By exploring new construction and finding a builder who is willing to go the extra mile, buyers can potentially obtain a mortgage rate that is lower than the average. Some reports suggest rates as low as 3%, 4%, or 5% for 30-year fixed-rate mortgages with lower insurance costs. This is certainly an appealing proposition for those concerned about the erosion of their purchasing power, global uncertainty, and the desire to make a sound investment. It is important to note that these updates have only just been revealed, and this information is being shared here first. The developments are already posted on the official website, which highlights the urgency and importance of owning property. It is crucial to base decisions on facts and consider the future, rather than simply hoping for a return to past market conditions. Pending home sales have reached an all-time low, dropping by 1.5% in October. This decrease is even worse than what was experienced during the Great Recession. Surprisingly, this decline marks the 23rd consecutive month of decreasing pending home sales in the country. In fact, the current figures are over 10% lower than those seen during the Great Financial Crisis of 2010. In recent times, homeowners have found themselves in a position where they need to sell their homes in order to access some of the equity they have built. This desire to monetize their homes has led them to explore various avenues. It's interesting to observe how different elements of the housing market connect with each other. For instance, states like Florida and Texas have become highly sought-after destinations for relocation. However, the cost of owning property in these states is far from affordable. In the case of Florida, many homeowners have seen their property insurance rates surge by 40% this year alone. This increase is staggering when compared to the national average of 21% since 2015. The rising costs of home insurance, coupled with high interest rates, have made it impossible for people to sustain their current properties. Consider the scenario of an 8% mortgage on a house costing $450,000 with a 6% down payment. This would result in a monthly payment of $4,200. It's evident that very few individuals can afford such a substantial financial commitment. The actions of prominent figures like Jeff Bezos and major institutions testify to the upcoming upheaval in the real estate market. Bezos, through his real estate company, is launching a fund to acquire more single-family homes across America. Similarly, Blackstone recently raised an astonishing $30.4 billion for a real estate fund. They plan to invest this massive sum primarily in rental housing, hospitality, lab offices, and logistics. Rental housing has always been a significant focus for Blackstone, as evidenced by their establishment of invitation homes during the Great Financial Crisis, where they purchased over 80,000 properties at rock-bottom prices. It's crucial to understand why these big players are investing heavily in the housing market. They are not buying homes at the current inflated prices. Instead, they are aware that home buyers can no longer afford to enter the market. Moreover, they anticipate a surge in the number of distressed home sellers in the near future. This insight has prompted Starwood Capital to develop a new real estate fund. Even Starwood Capital, a prominent player in the industry, has bought 6,400 multifamily properties. There are rumors circulating that there are approximately 170,000 to 180,000 housing units, including apartments and single-family homes in total. These properties amount to a portfolio valued at $240 billion. The owners of these properties are preparing to establish a distressed all-state fund. It is worth noting that many consumers purchased properties in 2020 and 2021. Traditionally, the average consumer stays in their home for around eight years. However, current trends indicate that people are becoming less inclined to stay in one place for an extended period. Consequently, there is a growing number of individuals who want to sell their properties. According to the available data, it is predicted that 40% of single-family homes in the United States will be owned by investors within the next six years. Currently, that number stands at 5%. This projected 800% increase in investor-owned homes will have significant implications for America's real estate market. Additionally, 40% of U.S. mortgages were originated at the peak of the market when interest rates were near zero.
This data suggests that the current conditions are favorable for real estate investors, contrary to the optimistic belief that the real estate market will experience a gentle and smooth decline. The reality is quite different. The middle class is being hit hard, experiencing what can be referred to as a rug pull. Consequently, we are about to witness an unprecedented surge in home inventory. One significant factor contributing to this increase in inventory will be retirees on fixed incomes. Currently, 34% of owner-occupied homes are occupied by individuals age 60 or older. Many of these retirees have already taken early retirement during the first wave of the pandemic and have fallen into poverty. Considering all these factors, it becomes apparent that there are numerous individuals highly leveraged on their properties. Furthermore, there is a large concentration of people who have relocated from cities such as Los Angeles, San Francisco, and New York to states like Florida and Texas, hoping for a return to normalcy.